animals and their hiding places. Cactus and rocks hide a cottontail and shade it from the desert sun. How cute. Something has startled this deer. It bounds across a stream into tall grass where it is almost out of sight. Then the deer keeps very still and sniffs the air. Hiding helps animals in many ways and animals have different needs and different places to hide. When the cold wind blows, the red fox finds shelter behind some grass. For the mountain lion, hiding is a way to catch food to eat. This large cat uses its sharp eyes as it waits behind a log. If a deer or other animal passes by, the cat will leap out. While they are growing, young, young animals need a lot of protection. A leopard carries her cub from a tree to a safer hideaway. Like a mother house cat, she holds it gently by the neck and doesn't hurt it. These young cheetahs sitting in the shade of a tree may be hard to find. The long fluffy hair on their necks looks like grass around them. When they are older, they will lose this hair. By then, they will be able to take care of themselves. Is this brushy-tailed squirrel going to bury itself under these leaves? No, it's gathering nuts. It's, it hit, it's gathering the nuts it hid there. Squirrels look for places to store food in the ground and in the trees. This chipmunk has found nuts in a tree hole. It carries them to its home in its cheek pouches, which puff out and out. Man. I wonder how many he has in there. <sighs> Two chipmunks meet in the tunnel leading into their burrow or underground home. For many animals, homes are the best place to store food and to keep out of danger. Kind of like us too, huh? Peekaboo! A marmont pokes its head out of its den in some big rocks. If it senses danger, the marmot will skip back out of sight. Another marmot is digging a burrow in the ground. It carries away a rock. The marmot, the marmot will make more than one opening leading to its home. If an enemy comes close, the marmot can dash to the nearest hole. Muskrats build this home in wetland called a marsh. They made, this, they made the home, or lodge, from reeds in the marsh. Under the plants, a muskrat stays safe and snug. Like beavers, muskrats build the door to their home underwater. Raccoons and other animals have a hard time finding it. Pretty smart. Animals find safe places to live in trees, too. A baby bluebird eight days old, peeks out of a tree hole. Inside, the chick stays warm and dry. Fuzzy twigs from the nest stick to the chick's feathers. <laughs> Young bluebirds depend on their parents to bring them food. One opens its mouth to feed, I'm sorry, one opens its mouth for a beetle. Until they are old enough to fly away from danger, bluebirds need protections from their home. Golden lion ptarmans hide along, among the leaves of a rainforest in South America. These monkeys, a little larger than squirrels, sleep in tree holes at night. The holes are often too small for other animals to get into. At dawn, the ptarmans tarm crawl from their hiding places and look for fruit and other food. There's their little hole. Some animals have a way to protect the soft parts of their bodies. A hermit crab pulls back inside the shell it lives in. This crab doesn't have a hard shell of its own. It lives in shells left by other animals. As it grows, it looks for a larger empty shell. Armadillos have tough scales that help protect them. 
A turtle tucks itself tightly inside its hard shell. The sea urchin has long, sharp spines that keep other creatures from coming near. So why does the urchin cover itself with rocks and seashells? Maybe this is a disguise. A decorator crab also seems to hide itself. Without its disguise, the crab looks like a spider. It crawls across the rocky ocean bottom and picks up an animal called a sponge. The sponge looks like a hat on the crab. How funny. A parrotfish hides between some rocks in a coral reef. Before it rests, it blows a clear jelly-like bubble around itself. If a hungry fish sees the parrotfish, it may not be able to reach through the bubble. A small, a little fish called a blenny peeks from an empty shell of another sea creature. So there's a blenny. Okay, and this is that parrotfish. You can kind of see the little bubble he blows around it. It's like his own little force field. Blue dots brighten a ray as it rests on the bottom of the ocean. Waving its wide fins, the ray strings up the sand and almost sinks out of, or stirs up the sand and almost sinks out of sight. So he kind of makes little waves with his little, his little fins here, okay? And he kind of covers himself. And look, he's like almost completely covered there. The ray, soon only its eyes show. The ray waits for other sea creatures it can catch and eat. Like a jack-in-the-box, a jawfish pops out of its burrow in the sand. If a bigger fish swims near, the jawfish quickly pops back in. So it goes pop, pew, and it goes back down, pop. Love it. Where is the bittern? When its bird, when this bird holds its head up and stretches, its striped body looks like reeds growing in the marsh. So here it is, the bittern. It holds its head up and you can barely even tell that it's there. Because a tiny crab spider matches the color of the flower it sits on, insects it eats may not notice it. So there's the little crab spider and a large lion almost disappears in the tall, sandy colored grass of an African plain. Colors and patterns and staying out of sight help some animals keep out of danger. Hiding is perhaps the only way this fawn can protect itself until it's grown. It is not yet strong enough to run very far. Think about places you duck into when you play a game of hide and seek. Would animals be safely hidden there too? And that's the end. Hope you learned something from this nonfiction book.